What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel, Band of Brothers, the series finale, and it's July 4th. Happy 4th of July to everyone in the States celebrating. Be safe out there. Please. Celebrate responsibly. We are on the final episode of Band of Brothers, and this has been an absolutely incredible series. Just the learning experience, like there are names now that will never leave my brain. Mm -hmm. There are visions from this show that I will never forget about. It's, and, it's in there forever, yeah. And last episode was, I mean, as good as it is to watch it and to learn and to never forget. To know about it, yep. It yeah. was such a hard thing to watch. And Incredibly. Having to edit the episode, it was so hard to go through. And because of the way I edit, I go slow. Like, re-watching that episode more than once was so hard. But at the same time, it's one of those things where it's necessary. It is absolutely required that I personally like speaking for myself like see that and really truly like and that wasn't even like the biggest camp that that they stumbled upon they talked right. about the bigger one and there was just the women and kids camp and just so much other stuff and again it's just it's even hard like to even put into words because i didn't expect that even though like yeah. that's what the war is about yeah like that that's what was going on i just when they're going on a patrol, I just didn't expect them to stumble upon a concentration camp. And right, because I mean, they you know they hadn't discussed it. Well, I mean, obviously they didn't know about it right. before, but like you know, it's it, it wasn't even like a hint or anything. So yeah, I really wasn't expecting that. And a, one thing I do, I mean, as hard as it was to watch, you know, the men in the camp, I appreciate that they didn't show children in mm. that and the idea. I mean, it happened. I don't, like, I, even right now, like, the thought of it, I, d I can't see that Yeah, stuff. I mean, it, the, the wild thing with that specific episode is there was a very clear message mm -hmm. being delivered in the first half of that episode. Incredible. But the second half of the episode is just one of those things that, like, on first watch... It made me forget about what I was even watching at the beginning of that episode, and it made it, I'm sure it made the soldiers oh. forget about their own problems. I mean, it was one of those things where the soldiers don't know even what they were doing there. They didn't know what the war was about, and a young soldier, Tom Hardy, like <laughs> Tom Hardy, he looks like a baby. If it wasn't for you guys, I would have I could have watched that like episode a million times, and I would have never noticed him. Never. He's like twenty like, years no, younger. Not. Twenty years and a hundred pounds earlier. But like he's on the truck reading an article about why they're there and he was like, Yeah, apparently the Germans are bad. They're really bad. And you're seeing Nick's who essentially has hit rock bottom. He got demoted, his wife gave him a dear John letter, divorced him while he was fighting, and it's you just see you just see a just immediate shift of just like that doesn't oh, matter. Man, this yeah, that's why we're here. My problems are nothing compared to any of this. And it almost put things into a most insane perspective for these folks. And then just... Watching them, like, <sighs> turn around and walk away in tears, like... It was... I can't even imagine for the folks that were really oh there. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. That, I can't that, even get through the beginning part of this damn video just discussing it because it is so incredibly hard to even fathom I don't, that this is real. I usually am pretty good with putting my words and thoughts together, but this show has done a really good job of just kind of leaving me speechless and really not sure what to say. Yeah. And again, it's one of those things where love people, love everyone. Who cares if, if someone's a little different? That's and what makes it all awesome is that everybody's different. As long as you're not hurting anyone, mm -hmm. you do you, boo. Yeah. You do you. And it's just, I, I, yeah, I mean, there really isn't anything else to say at this point. And again, just, it, it's American holiday. Appreciate our country. And again, this show, love our troops. I'm always going to support our troops. 
and everyone who has fought, especially like that war, our our grandpapas, like the baddest ass generation in the world, as a lot of folks like to say. I mean, my grandpa was pretty man, amazing. So, I'm not, you know, I'm gonna have to ask my my parents about their parents. I didn't know my dad's dad. Yeah. But my my mom's dad, he was in the Air Force. He was pretty awesome. And one thing that y'all have let us know is, I think it's in this episode, they're gonna reveal the names of the folks that we have seen in the intros, which have been the most powerful and amazing aspect of the show. Just ah. hearing the actual interviews from the men who fought in this war and This is just... gonna make me emotional. I'm a I'm gonna get these ready. <laughs> yeah, so I, I'm I'm excited for that. I'm I, I'm I'm so grateful that you guys continued to push this show as a recommendation, something for us to watch. I'm grateful that we have watched it and yeah, by the way, the Pacific is on our list. It is added to the list of stuff that we're going to consider. We're not going to be starting anything new right away. It's going to be a little bit just because we got stuff planned. But any other thoughts before we jump into the series finale of Band of Brothers? No. Let's go. It was more than three years since Lewis Nixon and I decided to join the paratroops. And more than a year since we'd first gone to war. Not knowing what would happen to us, how long we'd be fighting, where we'd end up. I certainly didn't expect to find myself in a place like this. Wow. Come to join me for a morning swim? Yeah. You know me so well. Here, this is Zelensky. What is that? Ran into the regimental photographer. Said he had all these photographs of the 506. I traded them for a couple of Lugers. <laughs> oh. What do you think you'll do after this? I get some breakfast. <laughs> I don't think that's what he meant. No, after, after. <laughs> well, it's funny you should mention it, because I had a meeting with Colonel Sink. He had discussed the possibility of uh, staying. In the Army? Yeah, as a career. I said I'd think about it. What do you think about New Jersey? There's a company in uh, Nixon, New Jersey. It's called Nixon Nitration Works. That sounds picturesque. Yeah, well, oddly enough, I know the owners. Probably gonna expect me to make something of myself. I thought maybe I'd drag you with me. Mm -hmm. He wants to be around him. Job? We'll see how you do in your interview, but, uh, you know, man of your qualifications, I think probably scrape something up commensurate with your current salary level. <laughs> Will there be TPS reports? Oh, God. Yeah, I'll think about it. Only if there's a stapler. That was nice. I get the feeling that Winters made himself a career in the military. Okay. He's too know. perfect. He's so good at it. I know, but you kind of just want to go home, don't you? Well, it becomes your home. This famous town high in the Alps was the Nazi party's symbolic home, and all the heads of the Third Reich had houses there. Although Hitler was dead, he had apparently ordered the SS to make it their last stand from which to mount a guerrilla resistance against the Allied advance. The fuck? The first step was blocking the roads. Whoa. If you're looking for someone to find another way up that mountain, Easy Company is ready and willing. Duly noted. I already recommended you to Colonel Sink. Terrific. Let's go find out where Hitler lived. Oh, shit. Yes, I just had a conversation with General Leclerc. He told me he was first into Paris, and by God, he wanted to be first into Berchtesgaden. <laughs> I mean, that's a lot of rock to move. You fire up 2nd Battalion and outflank that French son of a bitch. Yes, sir. One easy company in the lead. Have the men assemble down on the Autobahn. Yes, sir. He's like, let me go. I want to get him. <laughs> it's kind of eerie. Very. Are these like the real places? Because, I mean, it looks. the architecture and stuff looks really cool. And the scenery. This is the one town you can't deny being a true Nazi. Well, you have to be to live here. Mm. Need to find some place we can put the colonel. Jesus. How about right there? Never mind what I said. <gasps> oh, Jesus. Oh, my God. That's their headquarters. Gross. The Eagle's Nest was a surprise birthday present for Hitler, built with Nazi party money. A mountaintop stone retreat 
8,000 feet up, accessible by a gold-plated elevator. What? It was one of the crown jewels of his empire, and the man was afraid of heights. Oh my god. Have a drink, just so as we can say we saw you do it. Listen up. <laughs> Concord like, no. just came in, effective immediately. All troops stand fast on present positions. German army surrendered. I got a present for you. Come on. Ten thousand bottles of the world's finest liquor, wine, and champagne helped Easy Company mark the day the war in Europe came to an end. Oh wow. shit! Take what you want and have each company take a truckload. Wow! Happy V Day. V Day. Victory in Europe. Wow. Nix is like in heaven. Happy V Day. Where's my whiskey? Instead of an aggressive combat unit, we became an occupation force. And no one wanted to leave Birch's garden until they saw Austria. Look how pretty. Do you think these places are like tarnished because of who was living there? Or do you think people have overtaken and made it better? I would hope that. Put it to good use. I mean, because you, it's, you know. The war is over! We'll be comfortable here. <laughs> yeah. Please accept this as my formal surrender, Major. It is better than to lay it on the desk of a clerk. You may keep your sidearm, Colonel. I mean, winter shows a lot of respect. Oh, God damn it, Shifty. You let him get away. Army ought to be glad to be rid of you. I wish, you know. Seems they want me to stay around a while. How many points you need? Fifteen. Jesus Christ, I thought I had it bad. No purple heart. She never was injured. General Taylor is aware that many veterans, including Normandy veterans, still do not have the 85 points required to be discharged. On this, the anniversary of D-Day, he has authorized a lottery to send one man home in each company, effective immediately. For easy company, the winner is... There was only one name in there? Sergeant Darrell C. Powers! Yeah. Yeah. That's how it's done, Shifty! Congratulations, Shifty. The 101st Airborne Division will definitely be redeployed to the Pacific. We will begin training to go to war. Wow. That's got to be so difficult. I don't mean to interrupt you, sir. I just wanted to um, say goodbye. Back home in Virginia, where I just don't rightly know how I'm going to explain all this. I just like the way Winters looks at him. I seen, I seen. You're a hell of a fine soldier, Shifty. There's nothing more to explain. Thank you, sir. How do you explain that? How do you see? How do you explain the things that you've seen? Two days later, Shifty Powers was on a truck headed for the rear in a boat home. Unfortunately, the truck was hit head on by a drunken corporal from another regiment. What? Shifty had a broken pelvis, a broken arm, and a bad concussion. He survived, but had to spend the next few months in a series of hospitals. Oh my god! I wish I could say that he was our only casualty in Austria. That I'll never understand. They make it all the way through war. He didn't Trying get- Trying to leave. He didn't get injured at all, he said. Not at all, he didn't get a purple heart, he didn't get injured. On his way home. Gets hurt. Oh my god. Got some glory here, applied for a transfer. 13th Airborne and heading out for the Pacific right away. If I'm going, I want to get it over with. Are you in on this too? I can't let him go by himself. He doesn't know where it is. <laughs> what? You're leaving the men? They don't need me anymore. How could you say that? Everybody needs you. So he had an opportunity to be done with this. He was like, nope, send me over now. Yes, Company E lost 24 men killed there. 
Yes, sir. 17 of those were in my company commander's plane and went down on D-Day. So you were given command of the company on D-Day? That's right. In Holland, they uh, bumped you to Battalion XO. Yes, sir. Bastards took your company away. Fired my last shots there. Well, the whole damn war. Yes, sir. Can't imagine a tougher test for a leader. I'm gonna sit through a siege like that under those conditions. You got through it. Having to relive all this shit. Major, I took this meeting out of respect for your achievements and for the hunting first. If they do go to the Pacific eventually, uh, you should be running one of the battalions. Thank you, sir. And frankly, I think you men have earned the right to keep you around. Yes, sir. So I would stay in Austria for the time being, waiting for orders and trying to watch over soldiers who had no enemy to fight. It's a personal thing, Joe? No, it's a goddamn order. You think he's a soldier like you and me? Fucking innocent German officer? Where the hell have you been for the past three years? He's guilty. Liebgott says so. He probably is. Shoot him! No. Oh, damn. 75 points. How about you? I mean, you're a Tacoa guy, right? 81. Well, it's just not good enough. Dead when they brought him in. What? The enemy had surrendered, but somehow men were still dying. Young men who wanted to be home with their families by now, who'd served with distinction since before Normandy, were stuck here because they didn't have the points. What they did have plenty of were weapons, alcohol, and too much time on their Fuck, dude. Wait here. What happened now? You okay, Matt? You need some help? What the fuck? They wouldn't give me any gas. <laughs> Routes. Oh shit, dude. I tried to explain. This fucking limey wouldn't listen. I think he was a major. Why don't you give me a weapon? I guess I'll just use his Jeeva. I don't think he's gonna be needing it. Oh, oh my god! What the fuck? Oh my god! What the fuck? Oh my god! Oh my god, this is... Ugh. I mean, they can't leave and... There's... <laughs> Well, like they were seen, plenty of weapons, alcohol, and time. Where are we going? To the hospital. Get in. If you're going to shoot me, shoot me. If you're not, put the gun away. What happened to him? He shot in the head. Come on. If you want him to live, you'll help me. First, by putting that away. Let's go. Let me drive. We'll get there faster. Oh my God. I hope to God they find the fucking. Where is he? How's Grant? Where is he? Is he okay? Where is he? That's him? That's him. Replacement, our company. Where's the weapon? What weapon? <laughs> when you talk to an officer, you say, sir. <laughs> Have the MPs take care of this piece of shit. Grant's dead? No. Grant's surgeon says he's gonna make it. Oh, Jesus. 
Unbelievable. The Army, when they give a man a battlefield commission, make him an officer. They usually don't let him stay with the same company. They're afraid the men won't show him the proper degree of respect as they would another officer. It's an idiotic theory, especially in your case. You've given me the choice as to where to reassign you, and I thought battalion headquarters might be a good place. I can think of a few better, sir. Good. Good. Down at the airfield, there is a German general who was a little PO'd about having it surrendered to Private Babe Heffron from South Philly. Thinks it's beneath his stature. I thought Second Lieutenant Carwood Lipton from West Virginia could soothe his ruffled feathers. No problem, sir. Major, uh... With your permission, I would like to address my men briefly. That'll be fine, General. <sighs> Captain Sobel. Major Winters. Captain Sobel, we salute the rank, not the man. <laughs> this guy's going to your fucking head. <laughs> Look at his face. <laughs> He's like, fuck, told him. Told him. It's a long war. It's a hard war. Man, it's been a long war. It's been a tough war. We fought bravely, proudly for your country. You are a special group. We found in one another a bond. We've seen death and suffered together. I'm proud to have served with each and every one of you. Sie alle verdienen ein langes und glückliches Leben in Frieden. We deserve long and happy lives in peace. I mean, they were just serving their country. What they thought, I guess, was the right thing to do. New Jersey, huh? Yeah, think about it. Yeah, I am. Oh! <laughs> but Compton came back to see the company to let us know that he was all right. He became a prosecutor in Los Angeles. Hey. He convicted Sirhan Sirhan in the murder of Robert Kennedy. Whoa. And was later appointed to the California Court of Appeals. Wow. David Webster became a writer for the Saturday Evening Post and Wall Street Journal, and later wrote a book about sharks. In 1961, he went out on the ocean alone and was never seen again. Oh. Johnny Martin would return to his job at the railroad and then start his own construction company. He splits his time between Arizona and a place in Montana. George Luz became a handyman in Providence, Rhode Island. As a testament to his character, 1,600 people attended his funeral in 1998. 1,600. Oh my God. Frank Fricani returned to Chicago and worked a postal route as a mailman. Joe Liebgott returned to San Francisco and drove his cab. Bull Ranneman was one of the best soldiers I ever had. He went into the earth moving business in Arkansas. He's still there. Of course he did. <laughs> Alton Moore returned to Wyoming with a unique souvenir, Hitler's personal photo albums. Whoa. He was killed in a car accident in 1958. How we lived our lives after the war was as varied as each man. Carwood Lipton became a glass-making executive in charge of factories all over the world. He has a nice life in North Carolina. Harry Welsh, he married Kitty Grogan, became an administrator for the Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania school system. I love him seeing the uniform. Ronald Spears stayed in the army, served in Korea, and 1958 returned to Germany as governor of Spandau Prison. He retired a lieutenant colonel. That makes sense. For Easy Company, it was D-Day plus 434. Wow. This morning, President Truman received the unconditional surrender from the Japanese. War's over. Regardless of points, medals, or wounds, each man in the 101st Airborne would be going home. Each of us would be forever connected by our shared experience, and each would have to rejoin the world as best he could. But came back though. Came back to hang out with his buddies. Lewis Nixon had some tough times after the war. He was divorced a couple of times. Then in 1956, he married a woman named Grace and everything came together for him. He spent the rest of his life with her, traveling the world. My friend Lou died in 1995. 
I took up his job offer and was a personnel manager at the Nixon Nitration Works until I was called back into service in 1950 to train officers and rangers. I chose not to go to Korea. I'd had enough of war. I stayed around Hershey, Pennsylvania, finally finding a little farm, a little peaceful corner of the world where I still live today. There is not a day that goes by that I do not think of the men I served with. Never got to enjoy the world without war. A very unusual feeling. That is a very <laughs> unusual happening. And it's a very unusual bonding. We knew that we could depend on each other. And so we were a, a close-knit group. Just brave. So brave is unbelievable. And uh, I don't know anybody <laughs> that I admire more than Bill Garnier and, and Joe Toy. They were very, very special. I'm just one part of the big war, that's all. One little part. And I'm proud to be a part of it. Sometimes it makes me cry. The real men, the real heroes, are the fellows that are still buried Robin. over there and those that come home to be buried. <laughs> After the war was over and you came back out, well, wow, you lost a lot of that. Or at least I did. I lost all that confidence. Well, he's hoping to stay alive, that's all. Mm. Mm. Henry V was talking to his men. He said, from this day to the ending of the world, we in it shall be remembered. <laughs> we lucky few, we band of brothers. For he who today sheds his blood with me shall be my brother. I cherish the memories of a question my grandson asked me the other day when he said, Grandpa, were you a hero in the war? <laughs> Grandpa said no. <laughs> but I served in a company of girls. <laughs> wow. That was so good. I don't even have words. I don't have them either. That is so good. You were right about winners at the end, though. <laughs> Those are the glasses and stuff. And it's just like the perfect hair. Just the way he talks. And the way that they had his character talk. It's like, it just sounds like him. Mm. You know? That was... Easily one of the best 10 episodes of anything I've ever seen in my life. So good. Everything it about so, it. But it's so scary that it's real. Yeah. It's just. I can't imagine um, that life experience that you share with somebody. Oh, From no. all over the place. No, there's nothing. There's nothing that could compare to what those men went through together. Right. There's not like... It, Just, nothing. But from start to finish, the way it was filmed, the way these actors who are... I would imagine for a lot of these guys that we know now, had to have been their first jobs maybe as actors because of how young they all were maybe not the first but like really early on in their careers the acting and just the cinematography made it feel so real the emotion was just it's just on a whole nother level because it is real these stories are true these soldiers exist this war was a really, really big thing in the world. And it's just, it, it was per like, it felt perfect yeah. in terms of the way they executed telling the story. With the interviews at the beginning of the episodes and hearing from the men who fought this war and then just getting into the episode itself, it's just, it was an immediate just just realization and just kind of just understanding like, Hey, we know you're watching a show right now, but this is real. And these are real men that we're following. And 
yeah, it was just, I'm so happy and so grateful and also like heartbroken just because of the stuff that experienced during this war and everything that happened. And it's just so many lives lost at such young ages yeah. and they just barely, you know, barely even adults. And most of them had no idea what they were even fighting for. On probably on, on every side. A lot of the soldiers probably didn't know what they were doing. They, I mean, obviously there's there had to have been... Because the, there's so many soldiers. They couldn't all know what like the German and Hitler and all of his like crew were doing. Like, they... Just for yeah, for the German side, were the were the were those German soldiers expl- German soldiers explained to? This is why we hate, and this is why we're doing this. I and you're no going to do this for the good of Germany. It's like the like, the American soldiers didn't know what was going on until almost the end. Like I don't want to just like broad like hatred of course for anybody who served because I don't know how much they know. And were they forced to do this? Well, we even met a soldier who was from the United States. Who went over there because his parents were like, from there. Did he know about the Holocaust and all the stuff that was happening? I couldn't imagine that he would. I mean, why would privates... And I don't know how the German ranking works, but like a private in the German... like They wouldn't have that information or know exactly what no, was going on. No, they're just being told that they have to... Fight. Like unless they're sent to a concentration camp to run it and like oversee it or whatever. And those fuckers but, knew. Fuck those guys. I like, mean, it's just it's just so insane and just yeah. I don't know. I, I'm just grateful to have watched it because it's one of those things that I everybody should know about this. Yeah. And I, mean, again, I don't feel like this was a big part of history in school. I mean, it definitely. It definitely and not to. Was. I mean, like I would. This would have been so important to watch. Well, again, I think we talked about this an episode or two ago. Reading and learning about it in a book when you're a kid essentially is not going to have the same impact that this had on us now. Watching this as adult with parents and like an understanding of what happens in the world, like you don't have that maturity. Of, of your mind and understanding of like impact and, and empathy and all that stuff as a, I don't know, like sophomore in high school, like, and, and plus you're forced to read it and study it and learn it. And if you don't like history, you're not going to, it's not going to like resonate and it's not going to stay with you. And it's one of those things where for me, I always struggled in school. So like, I couldn't tell you what I learned and what I didn't learn and how I learned it. But like, this now experiencing it like this it's just i i i can tell you for a fact that this is way more impactful on me than it was learning it in high school or even in college as a 20 year old like i didn't have the proper mindset to know exactly what i was seeing it's I just a, that, it's yeah. a whole different just level of maturity of and understanding and life experiences like it's just different yeah Again, that's why I'm so grateful that I watched it now. Same. Under, like, Very same. Because it's now one of those things. It's like, yeah, you know about World War II and you know about what happened and all this and all that. But now watching this and these 10 episodes, I, there's things that we saw and learned in this show that I'm never... like. It's, it's going to stick with me for a long time. A very long time. And again, thank you to every soldier and that you go fight and for our freedoms and our safeties and Sacrifice all that stuff. Sacrifice your own yeah. life for the greater good of others. Yeah. It's just, it's amazing that, you know, That's so, a lot. so out of the easy company, only Spears stayed, stayed. And well, I mean, just from what we, that we know. Well, winners, like he went back, but he didn't go to war. Right. He went to go train. Right. I mean, he's he's good. He's so cool, yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah. Um, also, uh, one of our lovely subscribers, John, sent us the Band of Brothers book. So thank you very much, John. Um, I'll post that on our Instagram. Thank you. 
It was an incredible series. Yeah. And like mentioned at the beginning in the intro, the Pacific is on the list. Hacksaw Ridge is on the list of stuff that we want to watch, and we'll get to it at some point. Um, but nothing new coming anytime soon, just yeah. to let y'all know. So whew, that series was incredible. I, I, I don't even have the right words to describe. It was just incredible, everything about it. I love so. that they had the real, real men. And that was very emotional. That was. It was a lot. Very emotional. So A lot. Any other thoughts? No. All right, Shaw. Share your thoughts. We'll see you later. Have a good one. Bye.